Welcome to Bad Hasbara, the world's most moral podcast. I am your host, the world's most moral host, Matt Lieb. Hi, how are you doing? I hope everyone's having a great whatever day I put this out. Um, I'm having a good one, except for the strep throat is still here. Um, my my child uh, gave me strep throat, and uh, now uh, everything hurts. Uh, I, I can't eat without it hurting, which is... Uh, I don't know, that's, it's uh, appropriate given the uh, mass starvation that's going on in Gaza. It's nice to know that uh, I can show solidarity um, or that my baby forced me to by fucking making me sick as shit. I think she put her, she put my toothbrush in her disgusting mouth and now it's ruined my life. So again, if I sound like occasionally like I'm crying, I'm not crying. It's just, I have strep throat. <clears throat> Uh, before we get started, a few announcements. Once again, everybody, give us five stars and a review on all of the podcast apps. If you're listening to this on a podcast app, if you're not and you're watching it on YouTube, uh, give us five stars and a review on a podcast app anyways. You can do it. Just go in there. Give us the review. It helps. It helps me. It helps you. Everyone wins. Nobody loses. It's nice. Um, also... Another thing that you should know, there we go, now my screen looks good, um, Sacramento Punchline, uh, me and my wife, Francesca Fiorentini, we're going to be headlining Sunday, March 17th at 7 p.m. Uh, that's St. Patrick's Day, so come out, celebrate your Irish heritage, <laughs> or if you're near, you know, Irish people and you want to celebrate them, come, and then, you know, see a, a you know, a couple of people talking about Palestine, but in a funny way. Uh, once again, Sacramento Punchline, March 17th, 7 p.m. Please come. Uh, finally, last announcement, patreon.com slash badhasbara. That is now the Patreon. Please join that because then you get, you know, you'll get, at some point you'll get bonus stuff. But for now, you're just supporting a podcast that is constantly demonetized uh, on YouTube. And, you know, that would be nice to help me out. You know, some, I need money because of the strep throat. So let's just say that. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Today, we're going to be talking about lots of things. Our main subjects this week are twofold. One, UNRWA. And two, why are the Irish so fucking cool? So first, let, we're going to start with some news about UNRWA. <clears throat> if you don't already know all this, sorry for repeating it, you know, if you if you do know it. Um, but uh, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, that is a mouthful, but that's what UNRWA stands for, uh, has suffered funding cuts after several of its staff were accused by Israel of involvement in the October 7th Hamas attacks. Now, the timing of this couldn't be more calculated by Israel as uh, the Israelis made these allegations the literal same day as the International Court of Justice did their interim ruling telling Israel, hey, it kind of looks like you guys are doing a fucking genocide. Um, maybe don't do that. Literally the same day this happened. And if that insanely blatant attempt to change the news cycle wasn't bad enough, uh, Israeli Hasbaris, of course, did what they always do and inverted the narrative. <laughs> and they accused UNRWA of being the ones who uh, were trying to change the news cycle, as I will show in this tweet by Elon Levy. UNRWA sure as hell chose a convenient moment to drop this news and hide it under all the ICJ coverage any other day, and this would have been a major headline. And the headline, by the way, is Israel submits evidence <laughs> of UN employees' complicity with Hamas. Once again, what do you mean UNRWA is the one who was trying to change the news? You literally, it's Israel. Mm, all right, and now I'm just getting mad. I'm getting mad way too early on this pod. I'm sorry, but listen, this is a very uh, intense subject, okay? So uh, a little bit of background on UNRWA. 
Um, it was established in 1949 in order to cater to Palestinians who have been ethnically cleansed from their homes by Jewish militias, uh, you know, during the uh, War of 48. And, uh, you know, in areas that currently form parts of Israel. So uh, they are refugees and they, uh, UNRWA works in a, num a number of areas. Uh, they do, you know, primary and vocational education. They do uh, health care. They do relief, social services, infrastructure, uh, camp improvement. You know, they are literal refugee camps. Uh, they do finance and emergency response. But most importantly, uh, they also provide food to 75% of all Palestine refugees in Gaza. So that is a lot of people who are dependent on UNRWA for food. Um, so after the Israeli government successfully smeared UNRWA as being Hamas, uh, funding of the refugee agency was suspended by the US, by Canada, by Australia, Britain, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Finland, Estonia, Japan, Austria, and Romania. Um, so this is a you know a good portion of their funding in uh, 2022. 44.3% of the agency's total pledges, or 1.17 billion dollars, came from uh, EU member states who contributed 520 million, including funds allocated by the institution via the European Commission. Uh, <clears throat> the funding cut was achieved rapidly, despite the fact that those Israeli intelligence documents did not provide any evidence of anything at all, as was made abundantly clear in this interview that uh, Alon gave with uh, this guy Krishnan, who people in the UK know, I only recently learned about him. Uh, but uh, on Channel 4, so I'll play a little bit of that for you. Huge consequences as a result of your naming of people who worked for UNRWA. What the world has not seen is the accompanying evidence. I just want to know, does, is there accompanying evidence? Is there anything beyond those names? And have you shared it with the United Nations investigation that is going on? Because there is millions of pounds of aid that is resting on those claims and hundreds of thousands of lives dependent on it. When we said that UNRWA, at least 13 UNRWA staff members were directly involved in the October 7th massacre, that was the tip of the iceberg yeah, do you have any of evidence the complicity for that? and that collusion. Question. Of because course, you haven't because published this was it. all collected because this was all collected on the basis of intelligence that Where's has been evidence? shared with our allies intelligence that has been shared with our allies. When I'm not was going it to shared with reveal... Britain? Because Britain claimed it didn't know. I can't speak to the specific intelligence that has been shared with individual Western partners, but that evidence is out there. It is clear. Well, is it's there not direct deflection. evidence about those 13 names? Where is it? Have you passed it to the UN investigation or not? We do not trust the UN investigation so that is taking place. So there is no the evidence the UN cannot, placed in front of anybody The United Nations this. cannot be trusted to conduct any sort of okay. internal review. Have you given the evidence the UN is part to the, the US problem. or British governments? I'm not personally aware of what material... Nobody has seen this evidence, is the point of that. No one has seen it. It is just something that was claimed uh, by Israeli intelligence officials. And just based on that alone, uh, more than half of their funding was completely cut um, just by, you know, because of the EU, uh, EU and the United States deciding, yeah, we're going to back our ally Israel. Just totally fucking insane. But there's good news. And the good news is, is that not everyone uh, is, uh, you know, a little bitch. Some countries are dope. Uh, and it was reported yesterday that Ireland will give UNRWA 20 million euros uh, after uh, key donors suspended aid. They said, fuck y'all. We're Ireland. We always show solidarity with the Palestinians. We're going to, I mean, they're giving 20 million. I don't know how much Ireland makes, but I imagine that that is a pretty substantial amount for Ireland. Uh, Ireland is great. The Irish have long been in solidarity with Palestinians, which has very recently led to some Hasbara saying some stuff that uh, is 
pretty wild <laughs> about Ireland, uh, including this from Oren Barsky. How is it specifically the Irish are so ignorant, brainwashed, and anti-Semitic? Uh, to answer that question, uh, this week's guest is a hilarious Irish comedian, uh, also someone who I'm sure at this point my audience has seen uh, do some both hilarious and very uh, genuine and beautiful videos showing uh, Irish solidarity with Palestinians. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my guest is, oh boy, don't know how to pronounce this. My guest is Tagaja. If you if you're so affectionate about me, say my name correct. Todd Hajig. Todd Hajig Hickey is here. My uh, family is gonna be at war with yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long night. Todd it's gonna be a long war. It's gonna be a long war. <laughs> Oh. I'm, I'm not going to tell you how to pronounce my Don't. name. Don't. I, I, you know what? I'd rather not know because at this point, Todd Gaha. Well, it's Todd Haga actually. There's got the H there and the G. Do you Can have I... Irish listeners? Do you have Irish listeners to your podcast? I have a few I Irish listeners. I would assume that you do. I would assume that you do. Yeah. And, and have they not been on to you to correct the absolute disgrace that you made of yourself the last, the last no, time of course, of that course you and they your haven't. darling wife butchered my name <laughs> <laughs> of course they haven't because they also think it's funny that i don't know <laughs> that's the thing about the irish you're like no 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 it's way better if he just keeps doing it wrong oh i loved it i loved it that's why i think it should be a thing i'm never going to tell you but thank you for your Beautiful, beautiful intro. I'm a big fan of your podcast. Big, big I, I, thank you. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours. I've been uh, watching your stuff. You know, I, I became aware of it, um, obviously, after, you know, the October 7th uh, Hamas attack that yep. uh, just took over the rest of my goddamn life. Um, Same. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm a really, I'm a huge fan. And, you know, I've learned so much from you regarding uh the irish's um the irish and your solidarity with palestine and it's just such a huge outlier um it seems like not just among you know like i don't know the anglo world or whatever the yeah. white but like like just in the west you are like the one country that it seems like you can look to for some sort of moral leadership even if you're not listened to Mm. And uh, I, so I, I wanted to ask you, like, um, why do you hate me so much? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to ask me a question, Matt, you need to use my fucking Fuck. name, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, uh, Targa. So, Targa. <laughs> so, Tleg. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm just going to call you Greg. <laughs> it might, I just might start calling you Greg, all right? Yeah, I'll tell you right, the, the, ang the Anglo version of my name is Tim. So you're very welcome to to uh, kind of recolonize me and okay. call me Tim if, if you oh, want I'm to. I'm happy if, to recolonize. I love I'd lo And I'd love to be recolonized by you, to be honest. Yeah, well, um, you know. Hey. I, think, I think Ireland, to, you know, to be reductive about it for a second, it's like sure. there's nowhere else in the Anglo sphere if you want to go down that road. Because you're right, like, say, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, your beautiful selves. Like mm -hmm. no other country other than Ireland in the Anglosphere, and I'm open to correction uh, on that. Well, actually, I'm straight away I'm wrong because I think the Anglosphere technically is you know countries where England is the dominant language. But I'm thinking about the mm. big colonized English speaking right. countries, right? Yes. So that dominate the world. We're the only ones that will understand the experience of colonialism. So right. I think if there's any positive that has come out of this horror in the last few months, it's that there's kind of a waking up to colonialism around the world yeah. that's what that's the way it feels and like from your perspective you might think that ireland is a kind of a homogenous like totally support palestine it's it's not like that at all really right. it's like we've got a predominant uh government in ireland for a long time we've never had a leftist government we have like center right or centrist governments right and they're ultimately quite quite pro-Palestine, but we wouldn't be happy with them at all. So you could only imagine if there was, and probably the next government in will be leftist. Right. But what has happened, interestingly, right? So people in the North, because the conflict in the North of Ireland is so recent, yeah. um, it's only since 1998 that there's been a deal that has been signed that has brought relative peace in mm -hmm. the North. So in the North, people from a colonized nationalist Republican background would almost all be supportive of Palestine because it's so immediate for them. Whereas yeah. in the South, we've had much longer experience of being kind of 
middle class and getting on with our lives and you know we got the brits out in 19 in the 1920s 30s yeah so we've fallen into a kind of a stupor a little bit of mm. like l- losing touch with our colonial past and if anything palestine has reawakened it i know you've got numbers on the streets like i've never seen protests in ireland for anything and i mean anything in the numbers and the ferocity and right all these little t- like i'm from a small ish place in Ireland Cork it's in the south and all these little towns around Cork there's Palestine marches and displays every every week it's extraordinary man I've never seen anything like it it's, it feels like a revolution it's beautiful to watch because I mean you know I and I, I say this of, of all of the Palestine ser- uh, solidarity marches that I've seen throughout the world I love watching them all there's something different though about the passion that I feel like I see from uh, the Irish people with regards to this issue. And it's a passion that is, uh, that I think most Western or whatever nations um, feel very hesitant to uh, display. It mm. is immediately, you know, spun as, you know, anti Semitic or, you know, uh, somehow uh, bigoted um, as a Hamas march, right? Um, as a right wing, you know, like you know, they'll, they'll call you Nazis and stuff. What the, the interesting thing about the Irish is that it doesn't seem to really stick. It's like, like Ireland is seems to be immune from kind of like the normal smears, and not, not to say that mm. you know, in on an individual le- level, you can't be smeared. Of course, you can be, but it seems like there's this um, Western sort of like. Not, not exemption, but just like the way we view the Irish is almost like, and of course the Irish are, you know, they're they're always in favor of whatever revolutionary group <laughs> wants to stop us from stealing the stuff. General violence kind of <laughs> fanatics, like yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah and it's cool to see. I don't, and, and you know, like uh, uh, you're one of the few places um, where you'll see your, you know, government. Um, like you have government officials and like elected officials going, you know, and on TV, going in front of cameras, like speaking at your yeah. parliament or whatever system of government you guys have in Ireland. And I'd love I, you to pronounce it, man. I'd love it. Whatever it is, I'd love you to pronounce oh, the, what, you know. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> what is it? Let, let me look up. Hold on. Uh, what is Irish government called? It, let it's me a, see. like, where, where are we, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm actually not gonna help you out with that either don't help me which is cool like yeah but yeah is it is it if i say it with an irish accent is it oh is it or a tusk Oh, fuck, man, don't do the accent. Whatever about not being able to pronounce the words. Like, the accent is... The accent, listen, I do a Lucky Charms accent, and I say things like, Jesus wouldn't like it if you masturbate. That's That's not bad, actually. What? That's That's not bad, yeah. That's kind of Tom Cruise level-like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just... Jesus! That's my favorite. Uh, So I don't know what the hell that's called, but your government, uh, the... uh, Yeah. Orectus... They, uh, you know, will have people. <laughs> they'll have people. Aroctus, yeah, Aroctus. Aroctus, yeah, yeah. Hey. And we, the 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 doyle is um, where so we've got a doyle and a and a senate, which is yeah. called the shannad. The, so yeah, so the shannad, the, so the shannad, yeah. So the doyle, That's... if you can see the word doyle, there's like D A yeah, for the I L. Yeah, D A I L, and then there's a E I R E A N N, Aaron and. Jesus I'm Christ. sorry. No, I I actually think I need to need to log out, man. Sorry. It's <laughs> no, like... no, no. Stay, 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 stay. <laughs> um, but no, you, I'm actually loving it, man. I'm loving it. You guys have like politicians. The thing is, because I don't know, um, you know, your individual uh, elected representatives. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, like, who is cool or whatnot. Like, I, Asher you know, of course, I know what you mean. And so, like, you know, I'll, I'll see some elected representative you are saying some real shit and i'm just like fuck yeah that guy rules now it, of course they would rule in if you know they also line up with as long as they're not right-wing psychopaths yeah. you know that's yeah, usually yeah. the case but uh i i found this cool irish guy 
Uh, and I'll play a little bit of him. I don't the know. Quite strong who he is. language used by Minister Coveney uh, and others Richard. today. So who's this guy? I think you can surely pronounce this guy's name. It's a, it's a it's an English. It's an, oh it's an English. Oh I, I didn't Richard see it. Means nothing. Richard Boy Barrett. He's a legend. He's an absolute legend. Yeah. Okay. Play cool. Away. Play away. cool. All right. Here's here's him. As you rightly said, means nothing to Netanyahu. To Smotrich, Ben Giver, ministers today in the Israeli government saying we want to destroy Gaza. It is an uncivilized state, it is a barbaric state, and that it should have sanctions imposed on it in order to end that apartheid, end that occupation, and end the possibility of the sort of genocidal slaughter we have seen for the last four months. Impunity was given, granted, and that has given Netanyahu and the crazed, bloodthirsty ministers uh, uh, on, on, that are his lieutenants, the confidence to believe that they can continue with this massacre. There, it has to mean the, the end of that apartheid regime where there can be equality between Jewish people, Muslim people, Christian people, and people of no religion who can share the land of Palestine as equals. Oh. Do you know what's amazing about Richard, right? So, mm -hmm. and this is another great thing about Ireland, I think, is that like, you know the way some people kind of popped up in the last few months and they're pro-palestine yeah and like to be honest that's fucking great like yeah. I, and any palestinian i know in ireland is like they don't give a shit like jump on the bandwagon they're 100%. delighted but like richard is pro-palestine about two decades like i i was in doha recently for the doha forum it's like my first time in even that part of the world it was amazing yeah. but richard boyd barrett is kind of known amongst every palestinian i spoke to and i felt really I just kind of felt really proud, you know. I was like, "This, yeah. that's one of our guys." Like, you know, it's it's amazing, and it's that. the dedication and the authenticity to the support. It's not like he was supporting Palestine before it was possible to go viral. Yeah, supporting Palestine, if you know what I mean. So, like, yeah, hundred hundred percent, and and like, it's it's amazing to watch, and it's also so disheartening, you know, when you compare it to, you know, uh, in the United States on the left for yeah. you know a long time now. Uh, the uh, closest thing we had to sort of like a leftist populist, you know, uh, politician was Bernie Sanders. Bernie. And yeah. of course, we uh, Bernie recently visited um, Ireland and uh, the, got some video of a, a moment in which, you know, I think is a nice contrast to the full throated condemnation of uh, Israel. And, uh, you know, this is Bernie's version of it right here. Just say my name again while you're waiting. David and I have discussed what is going on right now is absolutely outrageous. We've got to do everything that we can uh, to end the slaughter of innocent uh, men, women, uh, and children. What I have supported, and I will work as hard as I can to get the Biden administration to support. Uh, is a um, UN trying to bring about a ceasefire, a, a humanitarian cause ceasefire, in order to provide the desperately needed aid uh, that the Gazan people need. So, so far he has <clears throat> uh, refused to call it just a ceasefire and wants to make it abundantly clear that it is a humanitarian pause. So still not yeah. able to fully throat it, say, the <laughs> ceasefire, which is such a, such a low bar. <laughs> It's just insane. And here we go. When you get to the word, I, I, I get a little bit queasy. And I, I, you know, I don't, what, what genocide? We use the word. We've got to be careful about that word. Uh, it is a genocide. What's your definition of genocide? Bernie, you have funded Zionism yourself. You have funded the Israeli settler state. Here you are pretending you aren't. It is disgusting. Liar, liar, genocide, denier. Liar, liar, genocide, denier. It's disgusting. It is reprehensible. You are a child killer. You are a genocide designer. The United States military industrial complex are the largest murderers in the world. It does not matter if it is a Democrat or a Republican. You have murdered people around the world. The Native Americans are still being it is like wow. i hadn't it, seen that jesus that's amazing i hadn't seen that clip it's yet. amazing um and you know also you know you guys got an australian there 
yeah. uh, in I Ireland. What the fuck he's doing here, man? Uh, yeah, I don't know what he's doing there. He's, he's doing great. <laughs> um, you know, he, he's in good voice. Yeah, good I mean, voice. it sounds great. Is 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 the Australian accent funny to you guys in Ireland? <laughs> I'd imagine your version of it would be funny to us. Oh, hey, 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 it's not a noise. <laughs> we'll take whatever you've got of accents, man. Whatever you got, we'll take it's it. It's not a genocide. <laughs> this is a genocide. Um, I'll show you a genocide. I'll show you a genocide. <laughs> uh, but like, it, you know, just like seeing that in contrast, it's just so it's uh, it's so disheartening, you know, especially since Bernie, I think for a, a lot of um Young leftists here in the United States was such a inspirational figure, and he was also the the one who I think um, for an American politician um, had the most you know for Americans uh, like cutting critique of Israel, and he and he had this uh, the privilege that I think a lot of American Jews do have of being able to speak about this without the yeah. automatic assumption that you're doing it from a place of anti-Semitism. Of course. And instead of using that, um, you know, to stand up for Palestinian human rights, he has done the exact opposite. Um, and now is in this part where, like, moment where he's just kind of, like, got this watered down milk toast version of, like, basically allowing things to go on but being like blaming it all on netanyahu it's of course like from an outsider's perspective it doesn't look like you guys have a left anymore like you don't have no. a left a left and it's actually the same in britain the labor yeah. party in in britain are if anything they were cheerleading harder than the tories at the start of and again it's no mystery because you know the israel lobby groups are at their strongest in britain and the us and they're across all parties they're across all sides of, of the house so but um, but yeah, Bernie's such a disappointment. I mean, I don't understand enough about it. I'd be commenting, and I'd be talking out my ass. But it seems like Israel is like some sort of blind spot for him or something. Because on other issues, he is venerable. He's the Jeremy yeah. Corbyn from our perspective of I know of the U.S. Like, but uh, is is Israel just a blind spot for him? Or I what? think it's a big blind spot for him. I I you know I can't claim to know the inner workings of his brain, but I do yeah. believe, um, based on people I know who you know know him or have worked with him, that like the Number one, severely traumatized by the seventh. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. And number two, um, then this is based on me knowing uh, Jews, uh, American Jews of his <clears throat> generation still stuck in the idea that Israel, as flawed as it is, um, is is a country that uh, can do better and needs to defend itself from has a right to exist has is a right it all, all democracy of, yeah and also you know like there are people who were like I lived in a kibbutz in the sixties and it was yeah cool. nostalgia like yeah yeah and and, and they just um, they can't <clears throat> they can't let go of the fact that the country that they think is there is not there um and whether or not it was even there before when they were there i i think that they just are are stuck in that feeling but you know that's giving that's giving him a huge benefit of the doubt yeah. um, at the end of the day he is an american politician and an american politician uh is you know first and foremost um someone who's interested in continuing uh to have power and, you know, that's a calculation that you see a lot of people making in our political system. Uh, you know, I want to continue to have power. I don't want to be on the wrong side of the lobby, um, you know, and so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not I'm not mm. going to say anything or I'm going to uh, say just enough to not have APAC fund my opponents or I'm going to be full throated and, and ensure my continued reelection over and over. But you're seeing. Well, actually, two things. One, if it wasn't so horrific, I think it's quite humorous uh, when you playfully said there that Israel as a country can, you know, can do better. That was your assessment of them. I thought that was a humorous yes, it was. <laughs> assessment of the current situation. You know, <laughs> I was like, that's a decent sketch. I'm stealing that. But like, do you know what I'm not seeing? And I'm not seeing as much in the states of the possibility that the lobby would be defeated by numbers on the streets protesting right. for Palestine. You know what I mean? So what you're seeing in Britain, I think the Labour Party is such a good example because Keir Starmer's Labour Party leader in, in England, right? And mm -hmm. he, at the beginning of this whole nightmare, said things like Israel has the right to cut off food and electricity. 
So he, right. I mean, he might not have said that that exact sentence, but you know, the question was posed to him, and he basically oh, yeah. said, "Israel has a right to defend itself, up to and including effectively starving right. a, a population to death." So no, like, at this point, that's implicit. And when you say yeah. that as your response to every time someone asks you about a war crime, it is implicit that you're saying they have the right exactly. to starve. People. Exactly. But they're pivoting big time, man. Like they, you know, so he's he's a good example because he's just a complete like he's kind of like an automaton like he's just he looks like him it doesn't look like a human being he's kind of like he's he's malevolent and duplicitous but he's got no charisma he's a really interesting oh. factor you know because normally <laughs> these guys have a bit of panache right yeah but he's got nothing like he's like a, a kind of a wet wet towel or a fucking yeah. nappy like um <laughs> but he's just totally a claymation <laughs> politician just <laughs> smiling just... <laughs> <laughs> like just wallace and gromit style yeah, that's right. exactly it yeah he's, he's like but oh. they're pivoting now big time because I think, uh, and I'm not sure how strong the Israel lobby is in, in Britain versus the US, right? Mm -hmm. But the numbers on the streets are so significant now all over Britain that the Labour Party want to get into power. And their their latest uh, press releases and stuff, they're kind of distancing themselves from, from the genocide. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so I think they're looking at it kind of going, in spite of the lobby, we've got to, as you say, we've got to look at power. Yeah. so numbers on the streets are increasing like that's why i was like i did something a video yesterday kind of going if we could just double the numbers of the marches right now right i feel enough key politicians will flip there'll yeah. always be the extremists that'll never flip of course yeah but like you know if you get enough people in the middle <clears throat> you could i know this is probably scant consolation to people who are going through the absolute hell of it no, right of now but you know what i mean you know what i'm getting at like yeah no, I, and and I think that uh, I I saw that video and I thought it was great and it was the point that you were making in it I think is so important, uh, which is um, that this idea of like oh you know we've been posting about it marching about it yeah. you know for four months and you know it just gets worse and worse like what's the point and um, don't give up it was the point exactly uh, yeah because it, it, things I I also believe there's a huge sea change I mean you're seeing more and more even in the United States where it is Whoa. literally a no-go zone you are yeah. seeing more and more people who are uh you know like more and more noted notable people like more famous people that's yeah. how we gauge is of course who, who's of course. famous and has said something yeah uh, our, our politicians are the last to say anything uh you know correct when it comes to palestine we have a couple you know we have ilhan omar and we have yes. rashida talib uh and to some extent uh, AOC has been uh, good, uh, despite kind of the electoral stuff she does, where it's like, well, we have to vote for Biden, and it's like, can you you don't you just don't talk about that, just just, mm. just stop with the electoral stuff. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, like we are seeing a change, and I do think you're right. It's the the numbers, you know, the people power is a real thing, and yeah. um, it is great to see. I want to ask you though, like. Uh, what is it with Ireland that it seems to be immune from from the pressure uh, from the EU, from the UK, from the US, from Israel? Like there seems to be a, a, an immunity to the lobby that you have in your political system. Uh, or is it is it in the political system? Is it inherent in it or is it just the people? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, like it, it is mostly the people. But again, I suppose it comes down to like we're saying about politicians being tacticians primarily, you know, right. and they, you know, they, they need to be aware that most Irish people just in their DNA, almost in their bones are kind of anti-colonial, I think. Right. Um, you know, generally speaking anyway. So they're going to stand by the oppressed. And there's something about the Palestinian example that just the parallels to Ireland are just kind of uncanny at times. Yeah. Um, across history and across cultures and whatnot. Um, and so I think like our politicians, as I say, I mean, we're we're on the verge of having a leftist <clears throat> government for the first time ever in the South. Yeah. We haven't had one. But even our kind of centrist um, governments, they need to be reelected. I feel as well they're playing like quite a skillful game with the EU, because if you look at it, like we make some of the right noises, but we're not like we didn't join uh, South Africa's case. Right. Um, you know, that would have been really stepping out of, of, of yeah. kilter with the EU. So so they do a lot to kind of play both. They're, they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth a lot. But it's, it's just interesting. Even little gestures that we're doing are making world news. And I think that illustrates how paltry 
the support is from from governments in the west for palestine you know that if ireland yeah. is like this wow amazing example and we're not yeah. we're not and we're near happy enough for what our government is doing yeah. so so yeah i think maybe with the eu as well you know because of brexit in the last few years uh we built a really strong relationship with europe because when britain left the eu um there was obviously like yeah fuck it like without going into the whole brexit thing but right. but actually europe kind of had our back in that whole shit show yeah. so there's a kind of i think we've probably bought ourselves a bit of go off and be bold in the corner and wave a palestine right. flag for a couple of months a bit like you know but uh but we're still look man we're beholden to us corporations here like you wouldn't believe i mean like we're the yeah. european headquarters for facebook and google and so mm. we're afraid to do anything really of significance mm. uh, on a on a on a governmental level that's going to piss off the americans so sure. everything all all buck stock with the us you know that's why we were like so, some of the people in the solidarity group here that i'm in touch with like everyone's just trying to get to irish america you know to right. try and get to the biden supporters that that you know also hold that kind of nostalgic almost famine nostalgia irishness like you know to kind of say if you yeah. if you want to be irish it's kind of inconsistent to be also a militant zionist right. you know and want fucking palestinians to die because i don't know like kind of yay us or yay white right. people or you know it's i don't know yeah. what it is for really. whatever weird reason yeah. you want to make up as <laughs> yeah, to why yeah, that's yeah. okay yeah. no i know there's a lot of irish americans that ended up being like fucking absolute nightmare right wingers oh in... sure because <laughs> we're uh, americans first you know that's the thing about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like irish americans are very funny in the way that uh i mean i imagine for you guys when you're watching uh irish americans claim irish heritage and you're just like i don't know about this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like you just you're just from boston and i don't know what you're yeah, you're just, yeah. you're just re a regular racist why are you why are you putting us in there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but you know you talked about something uh you know regarding famine and starvation that i wanted to touch on with regards to um you know what's going on with uh, unra um <clears throat> so i mean if you've looked at the news recently when it comes to, um, I mean, any of this, um, but specifically aid to Gaza, it seems like Israel, uh, like, wants to starve Gazans. Like, Definitely. like it's not, and not just the government, but it seems like also uh, many of the people now, I'm not, of course, saying all Israelis, but they have a uh, substantial contingent of um psychopaths who are doing things like blocking aid physically from getting into gaza and like holding uh little raves and i uh i have a clip of a uh a rave that was blocking aid into gaza jesus to the rock music once again i added McDonald's. i added rock and roll mcdonald's McDonald. by wesley willis into this <laughs> just to <laughs> What a shit rave. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> I mean, it would have like, been way better hell. if they... <laughs> McDonald's will make you fat. They serve Big Macs. They serve quarter pounders. They will put pounds on you. <laughs> yeah. Rocky yeah. You know, it just seems, it seems like, uh, number one, that was an absolutely joyless rave. Yeah. Like, you look at that footage and you go, like, they're not even having fun doing it. At this point, it's just there's so much uh, just racist rage. It's a rage. It's not a rave, you and know? And it was a kind of a so socially distant yeah, racist that's, rave as well. As yeah, no no, no one's no one's touching. No one's making out. Yeah. No one's doing, you know, cool shit with their hands. And fucking there's not a pacifier in the bunch. No. Just a <laughs> no, bunch no, of no. right-wing psychos. <laughs> trying to block aid and like this this blocking of aid thing is is such a um uh it's it's not just oh well it's a couple of right-wing psychos it's it's policy um the new york times reported uh that uh smotrich blocked unra from getting flour into gaza citing allegations that some of its employees were affiliated with hamas um which you know is obviously what we've been talking about yeah. here and the Washington Post recently reported that Israelis are now not only are they arguing that food assistance is Hamas, they are arguing that food itself is Hamas. Mm. And uh, this is from the Washington Post, an article 
called Young Israelis Block Aid to Gaza While IDF Soldiers Stand and Watch. <clears throat> so from this article, Ben uh, Shabbat ar argues sugar and flour can be used to make bombs. When you mix flour with potassium nitrate, you get an explosive for a warhead, he says. Every pound of sugar and flour that goes into Gaza from Israel, we will get it back by the way of uh, by the way of a rocket that will kill our children. So true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah the, I mean, listen, we all know about sugar bombs. Uh, uh, <laughs> the tactic is also about starvation. Quote, when a soldier is hungry, he's not fighting so well. And the children? Nobody can say children are bad, he says. But, quote, the children from the past were murdering and raping and kidnapping on October 7th. Others say aid isn't even necessary. Quote, we heard they are giving them stuff that they don't really, really need, uh, Atar says. Like strawberries. I don't think people there are crying for strawberries. Uh, and the, the kicker at the end of this is, in Gaza, families are eating animal feed to survive. 93% of the population of over 2 million faces, quote, crisis levels of hunger, a UN-backed consortium reported in late December. Like, it's... It seems like a kind of a collective psychosis or something, doesn't it? Like that that article looks like it's just a mad person like that needs to, you know, we need to intervene with this kind of person. But right. I have a wacky, not so much a wacky, but an unexpected take on all this. Like, I don't believe, right, and it's going to get a bit kind of psychobabble stuff here, but I don't That's believe fine. like there's loads of people are, for instance, psychopaths, right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I think that propaganda is a hell of a drug. Yes. You know, and from what I can gather, like most people uh, who are Zionist or whatever have just consumed one hell of a drug. And now there's no going back. So yeah. like when this, the, when, it feels like when the world is different now and what I'm getting the sense, because I'm just judging it by the abuse that I'm getting online. Like I'm now getting, like people are no longer engaging in any kind of arguments or anything. Like they're right. just like insulting my head or you know right and like it's usually a good sign when somebody just starts mocking your hat or your head or something right. yeah you know you you may have assumed a position of, of authority in the right argument, yeah like, yeah you know? that's but a good I way just... to tell that um <laughs> someone is just uh very mad online yes yes <laughs> when they just are like you're, you're ugly stupid head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. your head's like, not even good okay <laughs> i'm gonna draw you some good heads and you know have a good head yeah exactly <laughs> you got a so, dumb like, head I yeah. think that if you were to somehow break through and it's like, it's a bit cultish, you know, it feels like, you yeah. know, somebody's come out of a cult, like they need, they need some time. You're not going to, you're not going to snap somebody out of a cult over the course of a zoom. But if you were able to kind of just show them some of the, inf like basically just turn on Al Jazeera for five minutes or something, I always mm -hmm. say, you know, um, so, okay. Whatever about Netanyahu or some of the people at the top, I right. think generally speaking, you know, Israel has been masters at, you know, well, up until recently, it feels like their propaganda team have just fucking fucked off and left them at their most Completely. crucial moments. It's bizarre. Yeah. Um. But I think they have traditionally done a great job at framing the narrative that makes you just kind of go, mm, I'm not sure. And actually, my own my own uh, pet theory on this as well is that they have overplayed the anti-Semitism card. Yeah. So like, like you said earlier, right? So Ireland, we have always found that hilarious because we don't have enough Jews to right. be anti-Semitic. Like we don't, yeah. like, I don't know any Jews. Like I love Jews. I love Jewish comedy. You know, yeah. bro like when I go abroad, I meet Jews all the time. And I, yeah. but we don't have any in Ireland. We're a tiny little country. We're yeah. really just getting our head around having like immigrants at all. You know, right. so we're like, I'd have to go like knocking on doors and doing some research to find a Jew like, you know, tonight. Yeah. Um. So we, we haven't got round to it. Like even if we were anti-Semitic, we haven't got round to it. So like they always use this one example of like De Valera offered condolences uh when hitler passed away as well but right. that's a complete and utter like that's a side issue because de valera was so anti-british that mm. it was you know it was it was so to right. do with britain it had nothing to do with hitler it was like oh one of britain's enemies has passed away that's sad you know? right yeah that's, that's the de valera <laughs> angle on it He's like he just overlooked the holocaust that's how angle yeah. anglophobic like, he yeah, was it was like listen i'm not even thinking about that i'm just thinking about how cool it was when they were bombing london <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly. He was like, hey, he was one of our guys, you know. <laughs> so, 
so, <laughs> so, like, so that's why the anti-Semitism thing is ridiculous here. But I think what's happening now and is like mm. the world is catching up to Ireland. Right. Because it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's like, there's yeah. Jews online all the time. Yeah. Like, some of the most passionate advocates are Jewish and you're kind of going, this shit doesn't check out anymore. Right. So yeah. they've overplayed the card. And what happens, I think, when you overplay your Trump card is that your whole fucking argument starts to fall apart. So they no longer have an argument. Right. And now the propaganda has left them in a state where it's basically just shout and shout and sound mad yeah. or admit that you've been lied to your whole life, which is scary. I mean, that's terrifying. Yeah, it's it's like a cult. I mean, Zionism, I've called Zientology because it is <laughs> that's good. Yeah, 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 that's good. at this point, it's it's just like the way that the propaganda <laughs> works is yeah. so based on um, indoctrination um, to a degree where you are create you're fabricating an entire reality um for somebody to explain away things that are you know uh yeah. in, indefensible and so like uh and and in the same way that it like cuts you off from uh like tr trusting anyone yes. who is not also a scientologist or a scientologist yeah yeah uh, yeah sure and and in the way that like if you go against it you know they you know it breaks up families it's just like any cult you know, as soon as you start questioning it and whatnot, you can be declared a suppressive person as they do in Scientology. And, you know, then they make you a uh, persona non grata. You're not, a, you know, they they ostracize people from their communities and whatnot. Yes. And it's an us and them kind of thing. So, 100%. like, everyone is out to get us and everyone's anti semitic I mean, even your your dude, Elon Levy, there is yeah. just the most uncomfortably creepy man in the history of human beings. But <laughs> yeah, just, he, just gross. He's basically <laughs> saying, like, the UN are now anti semitic <laughs> right. I'm like okay cool so like it's just, just right. everyone and everything let's and, just like okay cool yeah and and it's so like it and it comes to a point where it like um it, and it's one of the reasons i think you're seeing more and more uh jewish people in the diaspora and in israel um like uh start to really start to resent the entire thing and start speaking out against it yes. because of the fact that it's like you are like Israel is actively cre like creating a situation in which by claiming ownership of all Jews uh, is putting us in conflict with every single fucking group of people to a degree at which we're like, wait a second, at some exactly. point you're going to call everybody an anti-Semite yeah. and we're going to be isolated. And, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like, I'm, I listen, Israel Feel free to isolate yourself. I don't give a shit if that country decides to, uh, you know, isolate itself. Don't bring me with you. What are you yes. fucking crazy? Like it's yeah. to me, it's just it's so clearly anti-Semitic, and it's so clearly based on the continuation of a narrative that everyone hates Jews. Yes, and that's another another quick point, and that actually is that like so in Ireland, another reason that we're kind of onto it is that it just doesn't check out that Palestinians would be anti-Semitic, right. you know, because because we immediately think of our history and we kind of think like, well, when the British came over and colonized, we didn't really give a shit that they were Protestants. Like nobody right. was standing up, kind of going, if these guys were only Hindu, we'd have no problem <laughs> with them starving right. us to death and taking yes. our land. Like yes. that would be great because we love fucking the Hindus. It's just Protestants we have a problem with. Just yeah. doesn't seem to check out here at all. You That's know, so. a, that I think is a really interesting point. And I think that probably also speaks to uh, a, a sort of immunity that the Irish people have built up against this type of Hasbara, which is like you, uh, you know, don't everyone else who is just kind of vaguely aware of this issue and is just kind of like mindlessly thoughtlessly being like yeah i don't know i'm pro-israel whatever um yeah. they all say the same thing which is like well i don't know the jews and the muslims religiously have fought each other for thousands of years like total total bullshit not yeah. not a thing not yeah, not yeah. not historically accurate um yeah, yeah. and uh we're is, like where have they done that yeah well yeah what are you talking about which <laughs> you know like star wars like yeah like which ancient war are you inventing in your head and uh and it's i think yeah for you know the the irish you guys are like no 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 you're you're this has it's you know the same kind of Hasbara was used, I think, for my understanding mm. of the troubles. Exactly. Uh, 
was I was like, oh, it's because the Catholics hate the Protestants. Yeah, we're like, just get some Protestants, you know. Yeah, like that is our understand that you know uh, that that's just what we were told, and something about uh, like them hating each other. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and then I saw the movie in the name of the father and I was like, okay, I think I get it. I listened to zombie by cranberries. I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but like the fact is, is that if you, if you guys know, you're like, no, it was, we don't care what religion our colonizers are. They are colonizers. Yep. That makes you, uh, you know, somewhat immune to this fake narrative, which yeah, I, exactly. I think is incredible. God, yeah. that. Should me and Francesca move to Ireland? That was one of the questions that was uh, Francesca wanted me to ask. Because that's all that like Francesca was like, wants to move at some point, and I was like, "Well, I don't like, ever want to leave. I don't want to. I need to be somewhere English speaking because I only speak English." What um, are you gonna do with place names and stuff like that, though? Like you're just gonna. I think you just get well, beat just out of be, Ireland. I'll ask like. my best friend Todd. <laughs> And I'll say, hey, how do you pronounce, you know, uh, everything? <laughs> no, man, you tell you, you'd be very welcome here. And I, I, uh, I listened to, I think you did a podcast with um, Daniel Maté, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a sometimes co-host of, of yeah. this podcast. Yeah. Oh, man, I thought it was excellent. It was like the point you were discussing about the fact that, like, you know, the Zionist thing, as well as being so horrific and brutal, it's it just lacks any kind of sense of self-awareness and so it's not funny like you know yes. the way they do these little videos and there's no humor in it and like no. that was one it was just when i think you were you were discussing that something clicked for me because i was like why are they so not funny you know because like <laughs> yeah. they're jewish like and right. like all all my comedy idols are jewish i'm right. like why are you guys not funny and it's like because you don't and i was thinking to myself if ireland had had an empire yeah We'd have no jokes, like, because all our no. jokes are self-deprecating, drinking ourselves to death, alcoholism, yes. pain, misery, torture, and that's why yeah, Irish and Jews let, get on let, so well. Yeah, let Matt, you know, mispronounce everything. Yeah, that's, of course, yeah, you know. let Matt shit me and fucking wage war on my family, and <laughs> yeah. I love all that shit, like, you know. But yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really nice, interesting, subtle point. You see, like, one, like that creepy guy that we were on about earlier, he did a spoof of one of my videos, which was kind of, weirdly flattering in, in a way because i was like at least i'm annoying somebody that i you know detest <laughs> but but it was just it was like it wasn't even not funny it was like it's like it didn't it's like he doesn't understand what humor right. is you know right. it's like he doesn't understand what comedy is or something it was, yeah. yeah it's anyway. just like a disconnected like robot facsimile of what yeah. a joke is it's just kind of like copy and paste like I've seen this. Yes. I've seen this elicit of a, a, a laugh. I don't yeah. understand it but I'm going to try. It's almost like the effects of if you swallow the propaganda that like one of the, the Faustian pact uh, elements mm -hmm. is that like you lose your soul and you lose your kind of humor. And yeah. It's weird. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. I mean, like trying to uh, make sense of um, Zionist comedy has been one of the <laughs> joys and just like one of the absolute ah. worst things for my soul. <laughs> Yeah, just makes my skin crawl, man. It's... it's just like just watching the cruelty of the humor and then mixed in with just like other groups taking strays for no reason. Like the, they can't do a like sketch about how much they hate Arabs without also being like, oh, by the way, we also hate trans people. Yes. Just in case you... <laughs> <laughs> in case you were confused as to who else we hate <laughs> they're, they're always just like you know hi i'm trans and i love hamas i hope oh, i hope i don't those. get raped and it's yeah. like jesus guys yeah. i know you think that making <laughs> rape jokes is okay yeah yeah <laughs> but it's not yeah. but like maybe just be subtle like you don't have right. to scream the word in every sketch like you it know? is it is it's anyway. just the worst it like Listen, as I'm also a stand-up comedian, and I've been to open mics where I've been less horrified. Absolutely. You know, like I've seen some crazy sets done by people with <laughs> severe, severe emotional issues <laughs> done in the middle of the afternoon at some weird cafe in you know Melrose. But dude. But man, have you met a stand-up? I mean, Park Zionism for a second. Have you met a stand-up who wasn't 
deeply and profoundly true. emotionally disturbed. That's like, true. No, they're all like, emotionally. Di- listen, we're pretty much like there's a reason the why board. we're doing this shit. Like, yeah, across the board, we are um, uh, troubled and degenerate. But yeah, uh, we may sometimes be able to use that uh, to our advantage by making a joke. Yes, and like I, the the uh, amount of like official like Zionist con- like from comedians who are you know working mm-hmm. uh and you know from you know sketch comedy shows in in israel i'm just like you guys are uh, you're sicker somehow than the people who show up to the open mic two hours early definitely <laughs> you know like you guys are somehow worse but um, it's like how would it work though you know it's like how would because you're 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 inherently punching down as well it's like why punching yeah. down comedy all the struggle so you've got to in order to laugh at it you've got to kind of be okay with genocide and ethnic cleansing and that that's right. a tricky position to be in from an audience perspective yeah and and i also think that it's about um you also have to have some like you have to be able to read a room and yeah. if there's one thing that zionists can't do it's just yeah. read a room Good they point, don't know yeah. they don't know what general sentiment is they only know their own story and mm. so the only rooms that they read are just what's around them, you know, whatever yes. bubble they're in. If they're in Israel, it's other Zionists. If they're uh, in America, it's other Zionists. They, this is, you know, how they, uh, this is how they kind of stay in this protected bubble. Mm. And because of the fact that they're coming into a joke with the, well, we all know I'm the victim. And everyone's watching it going like, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah. You know, like no, nobody, it's like from, from that moment on, you're like, no, you have not read this room that no, no one is sitting no. here thinking like, <laughs> if there's one person who's the victim in this conflict, <laughs> it's, there it's, seems to be some confusion here. It's like. the Israelis. And it's just like, guys, and yeah. you know, and I think for them, they, uh, and I think this is true, uh, in general, um, about, the way anti-Semitism is talked about, not just in Israel, but I think in America too, and in in the West, is we have framed anti-Semitism um, as not just you know bigotry, but the worst bigotry. Saying it, we we have put it, more. we put it on top of every other form of bigotry, and I think that has been one of the reasons that um, a lot of Liberal Zionists, I know, uh, have been, you know, American liberal Zionists have been so disturbed by um, the discourse, quote unquote, you know, online, because it's like, number one, there are absolutely anti-Semites who, you know, like are painting themselves as pro-Palestinian. Of course. And online, you're always going to find a fucking Nazi. Always. Um, but then they'll see like just something, the things that I would consider like careless statements from people uh, who are, you know, real people who are doing pro-Palestinian uh, advocacy. Um, and they'll be horrified that someone will do a trope or someone will do uh, a stereotype or say the wrong word or like, you know, just the, the, something will set them off and they'll be like, well, that's anti-Semitic. Now, The thing may be like anti-Semitic. I've seen people, you know, do something. I've been like, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's crosses a line that I would personally not cross. The difference is, is that I think they are like, well, if you're willing to do that, if you're crossing that line, that must mean you are the worst person because you are doing the worst racism. Yeah. And you don't have an argument because you've made that error. Like, so your, your whole position is, and, is null and void. And, and I think like the, the idea of giving grace to people who don't know the parameters of the correct language and whatnot is yeah. like a very touchy subject. Cause people say like, you, you know, there's no tolerance for anti-Semitism. I agree. I don't have tolerance in my life for racism, for anti-Semitism, for anything. If, if I am perceiving it, the problem is, is that people are perceiving anti-Semitism in things that I think is completely in bad faith. And they're taking that and going like, and that's the worst thing you can do. 
Yes, And I'm saying, like, all racism is bad. The idea that you would be mad (laughs) at, like, a uh, Black Lives Matter protester for not saying the exact right word and whatnot and then immediately be like they are a nazi and not at all being self-reflective about your own privilege about your (laughs) own white passing or just straight white privilege uh says to me that you put um you put anti-semitism on this sort of like you you put it above everything else and i think that shit to me like it waters down <laughs> anti-semitism yeah. and it oh, makes for sure and it makes it into something in which you go okay so everybody is now a nazi we've now called everyone a fucking nazi <laughs> and w- which <laughs> and and now i'm i'm stuck with a bunch of people who a lot of you i think are nazis you are jewish <laughs> like there are <laughs> Jewish Nazis now next to me going like, you know, we're all these Nazis out here. I'm like, you're fucking, I don't want to be locked in a room with you. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, I think Ugh. most people are just, I think the, the term Nazi as well, it's, it's, it's just become so loose lipped now that it's lost all fucking meaning. And that's, yeah. that's actually the most anti-Semitic thing I can think of that you've just 100%. rendered this unbelievably unspeakably brutal regime that did murder yes. 6 million Jews. You've now rendered that to be just some lad up the road who said something that you thought could have been phrased a bit better. Come on. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's like, uh, it's just the concerted attempt to water it down or to do Nazi revisionism. I don't, I don't <laughs> see that from anyone who uh, is not a Zionist. Like I'm only yeah. seeing Zionists do this. And, uh, and it's really, uh, you know, it's really disgusting. And, you know, uh, it means that their comedy is bad. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> um, before we go, uh, I want to uh, I, I want to end with this. Um, and this is always a depressing way to end uh, because it's always more Hasbara. But, uh, you know, are, are you someone who um, believes that UNRWA should be defunded i want to ask todd Gahu. me yeah do you believe that unra should be defunded i think obviously not but i think something that hasn't been discussed at all which is worth just saying is that like why does unra exist nobody Mm -hmm. nobody i haven't seen anything in the discourse kind of going you're defunding this thing that exists the only reason it exists is because of the nakba that's the only reason it exists like if you didn't if the West didn't basically turn a blind eye to the fact that all these people were displaced to make room for this new country that the West basically created out of its own guilt Mm -hmm. for actual Mm anti-Semitism, then we wouldn't have the need for this organization to begin with. So, so yeah, I mean that like, so you don't think it should be defunded. Well, well, isn't that convenient? You know, you, cause you care about like the children of Palestine. Well, what about, you're not thinking about every child. Isn't there one child's voice that you are ignoring? Here's sure that is. child. Global refugee chaos. 36 million refugees worldwide. Yet, 6 million Palestinians score VIP treatment with UNRWA. Others? One size fits all with UNHCR. Back in the 40s, who wasn't a refugee? Almost everyone including many Jews. I'm sorry. Back in the 40s, who wasn't a refugee is <laughs> the fucking me. most insane. Qu- <laughs> it's a four. Well, listen, who wasn't, huh? Remember the 40s when none of us were refugees? <laughs> what the fuck? Guess who's oh, still officially on the list? Palestinians. Why? Why do you think they're still on the list, little girl? Let, let them go home. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what? The what? Fuck? This is I, just to r- remind people. This starts out with a in lights VIP, VIP refugees. refugees. Oh, this yuck. is from Israel's um, official, you know, Twitter page. Oh my yuck! Yeah, and uh, and this is our, you know, this is my uh, our favorite uh, cartoon girl who I'm just going to name. <laughs> uh, her name is Jenna, last name Side. And uh, (laughs) she is explaining why Palestinian refugees uh, are, you know, treated too good. Oh, my God. Palestinians. Seems only Palestinians inherit this exclusive VIP refugee status. UNRWA, established in 1949, was supposed to fix this. Yet, 
One rule for Palestinian refugees, another for the rest. Smells fishy, huh? Thank you, little, little genocide girl, for once again reminding us that Israel at this point is creating content for literally nobody. <laughs> who, who is like, who's that for? I, I've asked this every time I play her. I ask the guests, who's, who's that for? Is it for children? Is it for adults? Is it for Americans? Because I don't know anyone who's going to look at that and be like, that little girl's right. We should defund UNRWA. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Here, here for that little girl. <laughs> Jen is right. Yeah, Jen is right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, God. So just in case you wanted to leave this podcast on a high note, sorry, not happening. We live in hell, <laughs> and I'm taking you with me. Uh, thank you so much, Tad. <laughs> Matt, it was an absolute pleasure. I loved it. I loved it too. I really, I really love your work. I think you do such uh, an amazing job, and it's been inspiring to watch. And uh, wh where can people find you, and uh, you know, find your find your videos and your content? Just everywhere. Like it's Tyg Hickey. I'm on YouTube. And... Tyg. Oh shit! Shit! Oh shit! It's Tyg. Oh, uh, no! Right at the end as well. Ah, uh, you fucked up. <laughs> Shit, yeah. yeah, it's like tiger without the R, so it's like it's like a tie and then G. So it's I like love that. It's just one syllable, man. It's so easy, you know. You could have got it, but uh, you you didn't. And we I need to move on. But I'm but, glad um, I know it now. But yeah, I'm on one of your fucking Patreon thingy majiggies as well. And like yourself, I'm demonetized on on everything by a lot of things by choice, to be honest. Because mm. yeah, but but some things not by choice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, people want to support me. I'm on Patreon, but. If they don't, that's cool because I'm on all the others as well, like Instagram and and Facebook and all the other rubbish. So yeah, thank you so much. Check check out Tig Hickey. I'm still oh, gonna call man, you. You're, pronoun you're pronouncing it perfectly now, which is just breaking my heart. I'll call you Tad Gacha. <laughs> I'm gonna still call you Tad Gacha. Um, but follow him. Truly amazing work. Uh, hilarious comedian. And then you know, uh, find out where he's performing and go to his shows. Uh, you, you're a stand-up comic and you're hilarious. And thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, buddy. Come to Ireland. You'd be more than welcome. Do some gigs over here. We absolutely will come to Ireland. That that is going to happen. Uh, Patreon.com slash bad has barra. Bad has barra at gmail.com for your email. Email me. Questions, comments, concerns, stories, whatever. Uh, and yeah, thank you everyone again so much for listening. And until next time, from the river to the sea, my favorite guy is Todd Gahick.